Hi there, and thank you for tuning in. This is a micro SD card. I hope you can see it. It's rather small. Some years back, I saw a video by Tony Northrow where he said, make sure that uh, you have a spare memory card stored somewhere where it's accessible, accessible for you, should you forget your memory card in your car, in your backpack, whatever. And that's good advice. <laughs> Did Frederick listen? No, Frederick did not. So this weekend I was out shooting the Storm Malik and of course I missed a memory card. So I was hoping to shoot it on my GoPro. I had it fully charged, spare batteries, microphones, everything was uh, ready. I just forgot to put the memory card in the camera. So everything today has been shot on my trusty little iPhone here. And uh, it did a good job, I must say. Uh, but of course the sound and so on didn't work out the way I had planned, but uh, let's see what we can make of it. So speaking of good advice that I hope you will follow, I shoot a lot close to uh, salt water. And uh, this is my trusty Nikon D4 with the 70 to 200. And this combination here can take a lot of beating, including salt water. If you have a camera and a lens and you're not sure if they can take salt water or rather keep salt water out. Either stay away from the beach or make sure you have it wrapped in some sort of plastic or coating or whatever works for you so that you don't get salt water into your camera. Salt water is probably some of the worst that you can get into your camera because it eats electronics and uh, yeah, it's just bad. So please really make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, otherwise you will be very sorry to see maybe your camera gear uh, being hurt by salt water getting into the camera. Speaking of salt water, one of the best friends when you're shooting on the conditions that I'm about to show you is a piece of cloth like this one. And uh, also I'm about to say the bigger the better or bring several because they will get very wet and uh, they will also be heavily used. I think I wiped the front of my lens, I don't know every 20 seconds when you have, you're standing close to a wave crashing in. So be sure that you have a lot of, of those uh, on board and uh, be prepared to, <laughs> to wipe your, your lens, the front of your lens often. But let's get cracking and see uh, the storm Malik and what it did to the north coast of Zealand. Today is the day when the storm Malik will hit Denmark. It has already hit Jutland. And uh, now it's come to Sealand, where I am, and I'm on the north coast in a little harbor called Hunested. You can see if we look over here, you see that that's Danish broadcast. They are always here <laughs> when the weather is bad. And then my hope was actually to see if I could catch some waves, waves crashing in. But the problem is that it's raining a lot. And uh, when it rains, I'm, it's not because I'm worried about the rain, I can handle that, but it takes visibility, right? So if I want an image of a wave that hits the pier out there, you can see that uh, then the visibility could be an issue. My watch tells me that the sun will set in 22 minutes, so maybe it's already too dark, I don't know. Um, but the storm should continue tomorrow after sunrise, so maybe I will get a second chance. But I will, I was about to say bottle up, but I will put on some clothes for the weather and uh, see what I can do. And hopefully I won't fly away. <laughs> but otherwise, if, if I come back, then uh, I will show you what I made of it. So this is what met me when I got out of the car. Definitely a strong wind, but not as strong as uh, it would be later in the day. So the wind would pick up even more speed than what you see here. And here a little bit later in the evening, you can see I'm hiding behind that piece of plastic there. That turned out to be a very good friend to avoid getting water both on myself and the lens and camera. And it's actually quite dark here, difficult to see, but the iPhone does a really good job of compensating for the fact that there isn't much light. And as they say, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. I'm glad I'm not out there. And here, as you can see, even the iPhone has to cave in. It's now so dark that uh, 
the images are hardly any good. But you can maybe sense that the wind has picked up even more, and uh, this is where I decided to go home and come back the next morning for more shooting. So the next morning I went down to the local beach, a beach that is very close to my house. Or should I say I went down to <laughs> the water, because there isn't much beach left here, as you can see. Where you see the water now, there is normally a beach that can be 20, 30, 40 meters wide, but that was completely gone this morning, and uh, there was just water. It is so that, that uh, in Denmark, when the wind comes from northwest, the wind is sort of pushed into uh, the waters surrounding Denmark, and that gives uh, a flood, and I think the message here was that it would be somewhere around 1.4 and 1.5 meters above normal, normal sea level. So uh, it was quite a lot. Not at the highest we have seen, but definitely an increased uh, sea level. And going a little bit up the coast, you can see here how close the houses are to the water. They are normally not this close to the water, of course, and uh, again, I think it shows how raised the sea level was and how close to these houses the ocean was this morning. Here another view up the coast and you can see there how the wind carries the water into the land and also how much spray there is all over the place here. Really really strong winds. I think they were 30 to 35 meters per second in the gusts but definitely a strong wind here and uh, if you think the sound is annoying you're listening to it imagine how it, how it is to be here in real life so going back to the harbor from yesterday evening this is now Sunday morning and uh, as you can see the wind speed has picked up and uh, the water is being thrown over the concrete wall and in front of that there is a lot of stones that sort of protects the harbor and this is exactly the motive I was hoping for so uh, I will put my camera in continuous mode and uh, give it a try and see if I can capture some good images here after that I went to another harbor that's close nearby called Lunes and in that one it was more the flooding that struck me and uh, you will see here in the footage right now that the the piers that are normally here, the wooden piers, they're completely gone. There's just poles stinging out of the water. So I ended the day going back to where I started. A new beach this time, or a missing beach, if I can say it like that. But you can see here to the left, the sun is rising, and uh, that hits the waves in a very beautiful way. And uh, I hope to get some good pictures here as well. But once again, a beach missing. So before we look at what I got, I just want to show you two images that I took in the evening the same day and it was so wonderful just shooting some woodland without any noise in my ears, without any fight to hold on to my camera. Just a very relaxing experience in the setting zone. And on that vein, I continue here with some images that show the flooding. And as you can see, the water level was much higher than it normally is. Maybe the best image was of this guy walking on the pier, but it actually looks like he's walking on water. I didn't plan this shot, so I was very lucky to come home with this one. So if we move a bit closer to the drama without all the noise, a storm can perhaps make you feel very much alone and very small, or just make you feel like you are having a bad hair day. So catching a wave is not as easy as I thought. I like to catch the wave when it's breaking or just about to break and uh, that timing is more difficult than I thought. I often hit the shutter a little bit too late. So I have my camera in continuous high to make the best of the moment and I also have a very fast shutter in order to freeze the moment. So it's typically a thousand of a second and maybe even faster. 
So we're coming to the end of the video and I want to show you what I believe to be the two best images I shot on that day. The first one here is a black and white where you have the sun rising to the left and you can see that the sunlight lights up the top of the, the wave and the bottom part is in shade due to the little house to the left. Also I like the way the uh, wave is both dark and light at the same time and uh, I think there's really a good capture here of the motion and of the power in the wave. And finally what I consider to be the best image from the shoot here you can see you have some very strong motion going upwards and to the left caused by the wind of course pulling the water uh, sort of out of the frame but you also have the water coming over the concrete wall to the right almost hiding the bottom part of the lamppost and you can see that it looks like fabric woven fabric and I really like that detail going left in the image you can see there's a lot of droplets and a lot of detail almost hiding the little house to the left finally I like that the house and the concrete wall together with the lamppost create a little confined space that sort of sets the scene for the entire image all of the images I've shown you here, they have been put in a Flickr album. I will post a link to it so you can find it. It will also be in the description. Then you can see all the EXIF information and the metrics in case you're curious. And with that, as always, happy shooting. Take care. Bye bye.